Hello, good morning, good evening, and welcome to Big World Cinema. Without further ado, we'll continue with what you're here for. And to ensure this channel survives, please don't skip the ads. Thank you. This question often comes up. Which is the better city out of Cebu or Manila? Most visitors will fly into one of these cities on entering the Philippines. However, a lot of people will say the best thing about these cities is getting out of there as soon as possible. Whether you're arriving here to live or a gateway to other parts of the Philippines, this video should guide you towards which city you should veer towards. I lived in Cebu City for almost three years. I've lived in Metro Manila for the past three months. I've waited until I built up a better understanding of Manila before I made this video. Manila is much bigger than Cebu City. To give you some idea, the population of Manila is around 15 million, whereas Cebu, it's only around 1 million. I wasn't initially planning on staying in Cebu for three years. I arrived in March 2020, was planning on staying two or maybe three months, and then the world ended. The choice at that time was go back to the UK or stay in Cebu. Why would I want to go back to the UK having just left my homeland? Nobody knew the pandemic would last as long as it did. So I just kept renewing my visa. As being unvaxxed, I couldn't go to any neighbouring Asian countries anyway. So I've seen and know a lot about Cebu City. I used to walk around the city all the time, had my favourite routes and either went clockwise or anti-clockwise. It's not a very big city. You can pretty much cover what Cebu has to offer in a day. Which is good or bad, depending on how you consider it. The traffic, however, is pretty bad at rush hours, so navigating your way out of the city can take a few hours. Metro Manila, in comparison, is vast and takes you some time to reach other parts of the city. Going from the area of BGC, where I live, to the old city of Intramuros, which is a distance of around 12 kilometers, took me over an hour traveling by a couple of jeepney rides on a Saturday afternoon. So what does each city offer? What does any big city really offer? Cities nowadays tend to be judged according to their shopping malls. Foreigners retiring to the Philippines will say, oh, it's got great malls there. All modern cities are starting to look very similar. The world has become just a huge shopping mall. Cebu City has business park and IT park districts where the business hubs and shopping malls are located. Ayala Center in business park being the better mall than Ayala Central Block in IT park, which opened just before the pandemic and is pretty poorly designed and very lame in comparison. There's also Robinson's Galleria Mall, which is actually a lovely mall, but doesn't really get much footfall. SM City is a so-so mall, and SM Seaside Mall, their flagship store in Cebu City, which is pretty grand and located beside the sea, strangely enough. This is where Metro Manila excels, however, as they have no shortage of fancy shopping malls. The prestigious Rockwell and Shangri-La, Venice Grand Canal Mall and Greenbelt Malls. Plus the mother of all malls, the Mall of Asia, which after three months I still haven't visited yet. Naturally, at each of these malls, there's an abundance of shops and eatery choices to cater for all tastes. Filipinos love their shopping malls, which are very busy of an evening and weekend. 
I tend to judge a city on what cultural choices it offers, places to visit and outdoor spaces, green parks, open spaces and generally restaurants, bars where you can sit, drink and dine al fresco. In terms of greenery, Cebu City offers just Plaza Independencia, plus a couple of cemeteries. Al fresco, there's Sugbo Mercado, food courts at IT Park and business park. The one at IT Park being the better option by far. They have live music of an evening, which is great. Live music is also on offer at the Carbon Night Market in Cologne, which has a huge variety of dining options. There's also various other al fresco places dotted around the city. The social bar and a few eateries on Ayala Terraces in Business Park. Some others at Park Mall. There's also another branch of the social bar at IT Plop, plus a few more eateries around that greenery. And just outside IT Park, there's a couple of nice al fresco bars and restaurants at 88th Avenue and Crossroads Mall. At the weekend, I like a sundowner where I can chill with a beer outside but I had few options in Cebu City and more often would just return to sit on my balcony. I'd moan in my Cebu videos saying that I found Cebu City lacked a decent al fresco culture and commenters would say, oh, you need to go to Makati for that. But unfortunately, I couldn't as I wasn't vaxxed. But I'm in Manila now and certainly glad I made the move as I'm spoilt for choice here. Greenbelt Mall in Makati is a lovely mall with many places to sit outside and dine or have coffee in the open air, but is surpassed in my opinion by the wonderful Bonifacio High Street in BGC, which has many choices stretching for over a kilometre. When I first arrived in Metro Manila, I wondered what all the fuss was about BGC. But I finally realised after spending many a night drinking outside on a warm evening on the high street, which is quite special. Take your time, sweetheart. I met a, I met a Swiss guy recently at my hotel and when he visited BGC for the first time over the weekend, he said Bonifacio High Street was the best place he'd visited in the Philippines. So he's obviously much more on the pulse than me. Also in Manila, there's Harbour Bay, beside the sea, funnily enough, which is a good spot for a sundowner and watch the sunset. There's a boardwalk here where you can take a leisurely stroll, avoiding being run over by a horse and car or trike until you reach the horrible man-made beach called Dolomite Beach, which really isn't worth visiting at all. Cebu City also has a boardwalk and place beside the sea at Il Corso Mall, which also offers al fresco dining. But I really wasn't keen on the environment and surroundings here, as it feels like you're dining in a car park. So nightlife, Mango Avenue in Cebu City used to be the place to go, but has seen better days since many places closed down during the pandemic. There's still a few bars in that area, including a British pub in Raman Street, plus other bars dotted around the city. As I mentioned, social bar in both IT Park and Ayala Centre. There's also other bars at Crossroads and 88th Avenue. If you're fond of rooftop bars, which I certainly am, whilst in IT Park, you should visit the Straight Up Bar on the roof terrace at Seda Hotel. 
Alternatively, just outside IT Park, in the Avenir building, is Verified Lounge. And also, Highlights Roof Terrace Bar at Harold's Evotel, which is not that far away. Having a beer or cocktail at these rooftop bars isn't expensive. A beer was around 150 pesos, which is $3. And a cocktail won't set you back as much as a cocktail in Manhattan or Bangkok, believe me. Manila excels again with nightlife. You're spoilt for choice. Whatever Cebu offers, Manila offers it twice in abundance. There's plenty of bars in the streets around P. Burger Street. The red light district of Poblacion, Makati. My favourite spot is Cafe Cubana, where the waitresses wear cute uniforms and you can sit out on the pavement and watch the Ladyboy Parade. Nearby there are also bars in Malate, but I've not visited any of these as they're all set behind closed doors. There's also an upmarket area in BGC called Forbes Town which has some good bars. At the weekend this area is throbbing with attractive ladies and some not so attractive. The prices of drinks in a lot of these places are often ridiculous western prices. But you can also find some less expensive places such as Reserve Tavern on Burgess Circle where I've drunk a couple of times. There are even more rooftop bars in Metro Manila and I'll be making a separate video on visiting these. Both cities also offer large nightclubs and KTV bars which are really not my scene and only start operating long after my bedtime which is now 8pm. So apart from malls, dining, greenery and nightlife, what do these cities offer? Well, culturally both cities have plenty of historical sites where you can swat up on Philippine history. In Cebu City, historical sites are located close to each other. Yap San Diego Ancestral House, Heritage of Cebu Monument, Santo Nino Basilica, Magellan's Cross and Fort St. Pedro at Plaza Independencia which is a lovely park where people gather to socialise of an evening and weekend. One of my beefs with Cebu is the shortage of art museums and galleries which is lacking for a second city but Manila has plenty on offer. The historical sites in Manila are also generally in one spot, gathered around the old walled city of Intramuros, which is well worth a visit. Although, as I said, it took me a long time to travel there. Both cities have similar traffic problems, but both offer a variety of transportation choices for getting around, with Manila also offering a train system if you don't want to be stuck in traffic for hours and yet again I've not been on it as even in August 2023 they're still insisting on you wear a face mask to gain entry onto the train system. Madness! But getting from one area of the city to another is generally easier in Cebu as it's geographically smaller, with less obstacles and traffic in the way. But the advantages of Cebu lay in what lies just outside the city. You can take a half hour motorbike or taxi ride up into the hills where there's some great restaurants such as La Vie in the Sky or Topps Restaurant. Here you can dine beneath the stars whilst admiring the lovely views of Cebu City down below. 
A little further away there's a couple of flower gardens in Sorrel which are also worth a visit. Here at BWC, Uncle doesn't charge a subscription fee like Auntie does, but buying us a coffee would be much appreciated. Thank you. Also travelling just two or three hours outside Cebu City, you've got a lot of choices. You can visit the picturesque Lambu beach outside Mual Bual, or journey to the neighbouring islands of Camotes, Bantayan or Malapascua. Manila also has a few options just outside the city, such as Batangas and Tagaytay City, which I've yet to explore. And there you have it. So which city do you prefer? I hear you cry. I think my answer is quite obvious, really. The benefit of Cebu being a smaller, compact city and being easy to navigate is its downfalling in my opinion as I'd constantly walk around moaning that Cebu doesn't offer enough to satisfy me. I can find many more things that satisfy me in Manila. Just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's inconvenient. I live just outside BGC with Greenbelt Mall, just a short jeepney ride away. So I, so I have everything I need on my doorstep and stay within that bubble. It's like when I lived in London. I moved to West London where I lived and worked. Then would journey to other parts of London on occasion by tube. So I'm doing a similar thing in Manila which ticks all my boxes. Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video or thumbs down button if you didn't, obviously. Thank you.
If you like the video, please could you like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to ding the notification bell to see my videos before your friends. See you on the next video. Take care, everyone.